Hey guys, Glenn here, and we're looking at the axis of a third and a seventh voicing today. They work really well together. They complement one another, particularly as we go around two five ones or the cycle of fourths. Um, so let's get straight into it. All right, so it's pretty easy in the left hand. We're gonna do one and five the whole time. So if we were going around the cycle of fourths, which we are gonna practice together, we're gonna practice the cycle of fourths with the major, the dominant, and the minor chord. We're not doing two five ones today, but we're gonna practice those. So if you wanna stick with me to the end there, we'll practice those together, all right? So we've got one and five in our left hand. So if we're going C around the cycle of fourths is up to the F, one, two, three, four, up to F, right? Uh, if we go up fourth using the key of F, one, two, three, four, we end up with B flat. Now we're in the key of B flat. If we go up four, one, two, three, four, we end up with the key of E flat and so on. So here's the cycle of fourths. If you don't know it, you can slow this down for a second, write it down or Google this, but C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, which sometimes you can think of as C sharp, G flat, which you might think of as F sharp. It's got the same amount of flats as it does sharps. B, E, A, D, G. All right, so it keeps adding on one flat the whole time, and then when you transition to the sharps, you just keep taking off one sharp the whole time, all right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense for you, all right? So we've got a C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. That's what we're gonna be practicing in a second. Now here is the axis of a third. Start off with a, just a, just a straight uh, root position chord of, of major seven. If we take out the E and we put that up an octave, we have our axis of a third voicing. It's a beautiful little voicing. Uh, works great with some other, you know, additions like, like that nine there. But we're just gonna do it just straight as a major seven. So that's the axis of a third. So think of it as the actual interval is a third on the outsides, all right? So we've got the other two notes of the, the chord in the middle, right? The axis of a seventh is where the seventh is on the outside and we've got the other two notes that are needed really so you can kind of think of it maybe as an inversion of your your right hand too you could kind of do that all right so this is a great voicing for a number of reasons and one of the, as a two-handed voicing it's great because we get some bass notes in there we get a little bit of harmony with the left hand as well but we get a little bit of harmony in our right hand but we've still got a couple of fingers left to maybe do some melody if that makes sense there. Hopefully that kind of makes sense how you can see, you know, I've got a little bit of room to, to use my other, my other fingers, you know, particularly the three, four, and five, you can kind of stretch it out a little bit like that, okay? Okay, we're gonna start off with the dominant seven because it's really simple as we go around the cycle of fourths. So here, let's start off with a dominant seven in the axis of a seventh voicing. All right, so here's C7 which is a dominant seven, C dominant seven. And I'm going to put the E up here and I'm gonna put the B flat on top as well. So that's the axis of a seventh, right? There's my seventh, the interval of a seventh on the outside. Okay, so we've got those two there. Now, what the left hand is gonna do is it's just gonna be doing one five, one five, one five, one five. So that's pretty easy, but have a practice of that. Press pause, maybe have a practice of that if you need to. What our right hand is gonna do as we go around the cycle is simply go down, <clears throat> excuse me, go down by semitone or half step. All right, so the E and the B are gonna to go to E flat and A. All right, now the E flat and the A, they're gonna go down one semitone as well. All right, we're gonna go down one semitone again. Down one semitone, there's that A flat seven. You should think of that as a C and a G flat, not an F sharp like Cordy is saying. All right, what are we up to? We're up to D flat seven. Then we are up to G flat seven, B seven. So notice the right hand just keeps going down one semitone or one half step on both, right? Here's the E seven, the A seven. So your left hand's just doing a fifth, and your right hand's just coming down by semitone the whole time. 
And there we go, we've practiced all of the dominant seventh chords in these voicings, but we ended up an octave lower. We started up here and we finished down here. Now, practice it starting with the, the third on top as well, all right? So there's the axis of a third, then go to the seven, third, seven. I'll go through it really quickly so that you can see what's happening. F sharp, B7, E7. You can pause this if you want to. That's a G, uh, G sharp, not an A flat, right? Uh, we're up to. And again, that should be a C sharp for the, for the A7. D, G7, and we're back to where we started, but an octave lower. All right, so that's how you do it with the dominant sevens. When it comes to the major sevens, all we're gonna do is bring, the, we might start with the axis of a seventh as well, right? What we need to do is bring one of these notes, one of these right hand notes down one tone, right? One whole tone or one whole step, right? And the other um, note stays where it is, okay? Then the note that didn't move the first time moves down the second time. So here we go, here's C major seven. So to go to F major seven, I leave the E where it is, and then I'm gonna bring the B down to the A, all right? So you can see this. So there's F major seven in the axis of a third voicing. Now we're gonna to go to the axis of the seventh voicing with the B flat chord. And the E move to the D for us, okay? Now the A, when we go to the E flat chord, it's gonna to move to the G. All right, just pause this if, if you need to practice this, get out the keyboard, get out your piano and, and, and do this with the piano. There's A flat major seven, D flat major seven. These are some of the first voicings I ever played and they've stuck with me forever. I practiced these for weeks on end at the beginning. So don't be worried if it takes you a couple of weeks to get these. It took me a couple of weeks to get it. And the last one, C major seven. All right, so where we started. Then start with the axis of a third, then go to the axis of a seventh, then swap to the axis of a third. And notice still, one note moves down one, set, one tone and the other note moves, uh, stays where it is and then moves down one tone afterwards, all right? Okay, now last one we're gonna do is the minor sevens, all right? So same idea, and literally it's pretty much the same as the major sevens in terms of the movement, all right? So if we start, let's say we start with a, an axis of a third in the C minor voicing. The B flat is gonna to drop to an A flat when we go to our F minor chord, but the E flat's gonna stay where it is, right? So that E flat's gonna stay where it is, the B flat's gonna to drop to an A flat, okay? Here we go. And, my, and my, my left hand, same as every other time, it's just one five. All right, now the E flat's gonna drop to a D flat for the B flat minus seven, E flat minus seven, A flat minus seven, uh, D flat or C sharp minus seven, F sharp minus seven, B minus seven, E minus seven, A minus seven, D minus seven. We're almost there. G minus seven and C minus seven. So that's a good way to practice going, playing all of your majors around the cycle, practicing all of your dominants around the cycle and practicing all of your minors around the cycle. Now, when you do do that, it's a great way to learn them but sometimes you can get into the habit of needing to play the chord beforehand before you have to play that chord, right? So you wanna practice them in different ways as well. So that's, that's a really important thing to do because you don't wanna to have to go, oh, F sharp minus seven. Oh, okay, if I start with C, C minus seven and then you kind of work, work all the way through, to, you wanna be able to go, there it is, F sharp minus seven, go straight to it. You know, if you wanna play uh, G major seven, you wanna be able to go straight to that as well. Okay, so practicing it in different ways is always a good idea, which is always why 
I give different ways to practice every time. So lots of my different videos, you'll find that I give you a different way to practice those uh, modes or those, those chords so that you don't get stuck practicing it the same way and following a formula or a routine that uh, can be helpful, but needs to be complemented with some other routines and some other formulas, if that kind of makes sense. As well as, of course, making sure you practice them in the pieces that you are working on. All right, guys, all the best. I'll see you real soon. Subscribe if you like the vids, and uh, we'll catch up. We'll catch you real soon. And uh, next week, we're looking at uh, one-handed voicing, and we're looking at just using three and seven and some color to make the voicing just sound super sweet. All right, so we'll see you real soon. Bye.